Hi there and welcome back to Iceman Day. We're still in the tower of the Severed Hand. Battling Oh Ghosts of Elves. You're gonna bleed. I say we kill the mage first and then we kill the cleric. And then we kill all the fighters. Ow! Oh, For what it. do you need you me sword. now? Murder most foul, <gasps> crass victory most fair. Ready. So you can't reach Done. this one, then attack. This before. ends now. Okay, this one is dead. I suppose I'm free to do your dirty Here. work. Everyone kill the last, what is it? Elven swordsman. Oh, how funny! Wait a second. A wizard. Do we like it? Him? No, we don't. I'm here. Right. The wizard is dead. Orders? I don't like them opening Your those doors. Your luck's run out. So we form up Agreed. here. Ah, dang it! Well done, yes, huh? very what are well. you doing? Ah, yeah, I guess. I'm listening. Where is the bastard? I can't see him. What did he do? Target gun. You have my attention. All right. We didn't kill it, didn't we? Oh yeah, there, there's a dead body here. Okay, 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 okay. Maybe we did kill Yes. Him. Did we get experience for that? 1,075. 1,750. And I guess there's... What? More in here. Alright. Get in there. No, there's nobody in here. I'm just checking all the doors now. Oh, there's a hole in the ground. Okay, no more enemies. <clears throat> Very nice. And there's nothing in here. But there's a table of some sorts in here. Diary of Evain. Okay, I take a diary, why not? And another table. Can't get anything here. Fine. Ready. So that's a potion of invisibility that goes to the thief. That is a quarter staff. And a spell. And another spell. And another spell. And a potion of heroism. Genius and clarity. What does the book say? So it has come to this. The orc and goblin forces grow stronger with each victory. Where they attained the weapons of the alliance is still a mystery, but I believe in my heart that it was not through the dwarves. We have succeeded in stifling their advances, but it won't hold for long. We have taken severe casualties and our forces are dwindling rapidly. Negotiations are over with our former friends. We are now in open conflict with them. As much as I, have lo as much as I love my father, I blame him for this. Ever since we found the weapons on the horde's in the horde's possession, father has been completely irrational. Any discussions had uh, with our former friends ended in bitter accusations and resentment. He adamantly believes that the dwarves betrayed us and listens to nothing they have to say in their defense. What did they say in their defense? Maybe someone stole the weapons? Am I the only one who sees that both sides are going to die horribly if this continues? Father does not see reason in putting aside hostilities with the dwarves so that we may unite against our common enemy. I spoke to him of going down deep 
I spoke to him of going down steep to approach our old friends. He lashed out at me in anger and sent me out of the astrolab. I now make preparations to leave home and ride to Dawn Steep myself. I know in my heart what must be done, and this is the only way. Perhaps I have more of my father's stubbornness than I thought. Yeah, well, yeah, well, okay. Obviously, the the orcs and goblins have had, uh, you know, dwarven-made weapons, but still, you should have, you know, tried to figure out how they got them. So that's the stuff of the hand. Made during the golden age between the elves of the Celerine's hand and the dwarves of Dawn's Deep, this stuff was carved and shaped with the utmost care and then etched with elven runes across its length. Although most of the hands wizards choose not to engage in melee combat, they wielded this stuff as a symbol of power and unity. It's a plus three weapon. Not half bad. But I'm not using it. Improved invisibility, nice. Protection from normal missiles, already have that, and greater medicine. Put it in here. So I guess the thief is somewhat hurt. Give the word. And gold mod also. I guess that's sufficient. Here. Let's climb up the stairs. Done. Stop. Who are you? Cast Hainos. You're the only one here, is that right? Okay, this looks like a library. All Hi right. there. Wait, but if this is a library, maybe you I'm should here. talk to him. Right. Shh! If you wish to remain, then stay quiet. You are in a place of knowledge and learning. I'm Castanos, caretaker of this library. <sighs> I hope you don't take. No. <laughs> Can you really ask that? <laughs> Uh, why not? We shall try it. I hope you don't take offense to this, but who in their right mind would come to this forsaken hellhole to check out a book? While I know that people all over the realms have varied taste when it comes to beauty and art, you obviously have the taste of one raised in the dark side of a centaur's ass. How can you make such a remark after viewing the glory and splendor of the hand of the Seldarine? The elves in the lower level seem pleased to live in these hellholes. Perhaps no one has told you, Castanos. The hand lies in ruins and its people are shattered remnants of their former selves. Haven't you noticed some things different about yourselves? I have several stacks of books that I need to attend to. Perhaps you should return when your hallucinations have faded away. Good day. Okay, so the truth doesn't work with him. Now oh, show me what books you have then. What? I like to read... What? That's a lot. A mythal theory. That sounds like a book that yeah the mage and Kaldahar would want to have. May you learn everything it has to offer. Was there another book you wanted to examine? Yes. Okay, why not? Let's take them all. Okay, what did we get? A truckload of books. Well, that's important here. Mythal theory. Oh, Denaini. We already met her. Okay, worship in the hand of the Seldrain. Day in and day out, the elves of the hands work diligently to further the cause of the Alliance. Although dedicated in their work, 
they always remained devoted to the elven gods. A shrine was created within Solonor Tower that would allow us elves to offer simple worship with what spare monuments were available. Uh, moments were available. A beautiful flower garden can be found on one end of this level. With care, an elf would take a flower from the garden, approach the appropriate statue of the god they wished to pray to, place the flower in the statue's pond, and pray for however long they had. Rock eaters, they are not. Contrary to popular belief, our dwarf friends do not exist on a diet of rocks and dirt. Oh, come on. Ancient lore of Sh Shivaresh. Okay. Ancient lore of Labelus Enoreth. No, I don't want to read all that. LMS Compendium. Code of training in the Seldarin's hand. Mm -hmm. Law of the Blade Singers. Ancient Law of Corellon Larathian. Ancient Law of Sehani Moonbow. Well, if you played Neverwinter Nights and chose that elven cleric to accompany you, know who Sehani Moonbow was. Is whatever ancient law of Solonor Thelandira. Ecology of the unicorn. Unicorns are herbivores living on the tender leaves and living on tender leaves and grasses. Their only enemies are griffins and those creatures that destroy forests, in particular red dragons and orcs. The lifespan of unicorns has the lifespan of unicorns has never been recorded but is known to surpass 1000 years. They are believed to maintain their youth until death is only weeks away. The secret of this long longevity longevity how do you pronounce that? Longevity. Well they are they are able to live long is strong magical nature of the horn. Unicorn horns are maliciously sought after since possession of one is a sovereign remedy against all poisons. Hippogriff Riders of the Hand. Okay. I don't think we need all those books. Come on, put them in here. Thanks. Oh yeah, wait, wait, wait. We could see well, we get another item you out of that me? one here. Boom! What did we get? Another gem. Okay. Orders. So, is there any way for us to go, right. go to that spot? Oh, yes, there is. But I guess there's not much to do here. No? Okay. Could we return the books to you? Oh, okay, no. Apparently, we have to keep them. And who are you? Stay. Larry. Right. And who are you? Gallerith. Hi Gallerith. That appears to be the Astrolab. Blasted machine! I'll never get her fixed! Might I ask what's wrong with her? Can't you see she's broken? I can't power her up until I can't power her up until her missing pieces are replaced. What missing pieces? I have no time to talk to those manically ignorant. Find me a piece that fits or stay out of my way. Um Who are you? Gah! You waste my time with pointless chatter. My name is Garalith. During the days when I was alive I built and maintained this hunk of junk that used to be an astrolab. How did you end up here when the hand fell? The last thing I remember while defending the hand was an arrow piercing my back. 
When I awoke I found myself in this ghastly form. Now I spent my days trying to figure a way to fix this blasted machine. Perhaps Laurel has some insight? Have you spoken to him? All he does is rant about worthless dribble. I can't make any sense out of him. Quite different from the noble elven wizard he once was. You said you built this astrolab? That I did. Laurel charged me with designing and building this machine. A device was needed by the wizards to help research the stars and the moons. Now it's only good for collecting dust. Well, actually we have several pieces. Maybe they can help. Uh, Kalissa bestowed me with this piece of machinery. Perhaps this is what you seek? Let's see. 24,000 XP. Oh well. Uh, well, well sent me to the abyss. You might be right. If you find any more pieces, let me know. Otherwise, check back with me after I've put the part in. Uh, this piece of machinery was retrieved from Solonor Tower. Could you use this to fix the machine? Let me see. 24,000 more XP. Okay, I found this piece in one of the war rooms. It might be able to help you. 35,000 XP. I'll remove this piece from an undead shadow within the hand. It looks like it's part of the machine. And 35,000 more XP. Uh, wait. I think that's enough. Yeah. Now it seems to be moving. And storm leveled. Okay, what now? Hmm. What would be awesome to have? Maybe great swords. I don't know. Great swords. That would mean we couldn't use uh, shields anymore. Or axes. Maybe we find a nice axe. Then we could still use our shields. Okay, what now? Look at her. Isn't she beautiful? You have my eternal gratitude for helping me fix her. May Corellon guide you. Okay. Uh, greetings, adventurers. Pardon me while I gather my thoughts. Who are you? And... What has just come to pass? Hey, Larry. Glad you're back. We are adventurers who have come to the Severed Hand to seek your knowledge and power. In doing so, we learned of the curse bestowed here and your sanity lost centuries ago. We have restored you to some of your former self and beseech you for aid. Indeed you have, noble adventurers. It must have taken great courage and strength to make it as far as you did, let alone restore some balance to my thoughts. I am eternally in your debt. But surely you did not come to the hand of the Seldarine on a whim. Tell me what it is you seek. I wish to know more of the events that came to pass here in the Hand. You wish to learn what came to pass within the Hand of the Seldarin? Very well. There is much to tell. Shall I start with the time of prosperity? The betrayal? Or our darkest hour? I would hear of the time of prosperity. In light of the greater threat of the Orcish and Goblin hordes of the North, we Elves allied ourselves with the Dwarves. The alliance was a desperate one. But it was either that, or fall to the Dark Hordes. As both races prospered from our mutual cooperation, we furthered our bonds by creating powerful artifacts and weapons. Delicate dwarven craftsmanship, combined with ancient elven magic, yielded items of great power and unsurpassed beauty. With the unity of our two races wielding the magical benefits of our labor, the Hordes were easily kept in check. Our cooperation continued, and we prospered in harmony for many decades, until the betrayal. Tell us of the betrayal. You will need to be patient, as this is a bitter subject for me. A great debate ensued with our dwarven allies regarding the magic items created by our union. It seems the greed inherent in all dwarves could not be contained. They wanted to begin selling our magic items to the other settlements in the north. Preposterous, I told them. 
to allow others access to these artifacts, all for the sake of profit. I was appalled, but not surprised. Dwarves cannot resist their selfish nature for long. My people and I were adamant that the humans were not to have any access to any magical artifacts. After many months of debate, the dwarves conceded, and we thought the issue done. Then, a day came that marked the fate of both races. Our forces encountered what we thought another typical group of the Orc and Goblin hordes. What should have been an easy battle turned out to be a hard-fought victory. For they were using artifacts and weapons created by the Alliance. Furious, we questioned the dwarves about this. No elf would ever give our greatest treasures to a hated enemy. The dwarves, of course, denied our accusations. In honor of our alliance through the decades, we extended our trust further and tried to come to some solution. We were fools to believe we could coexist with these rock eaters. Any and all discussions just turned into open argument and further accusations. Did the dwarves think we'd be stupid enough to assume that the artifacts just magically appeared in the Horde's camps? As to be expected, open conflict broke out. The decades of friendship and prosperity ended that day. The Alliance was no more. On that day, the Elves of the Hand of the Seldarine were alone against the Dwarves and the Goblinoid Hordes. I'd like to hear the... Uh, I'd like to hear the other aspects of what came to be. You wish to learn what came to pass within the Hand of the Seldarine? Very well. There is much to tell. Shall I start with the yeah, time tell of me about the darkness. Centuries ago, the Hand of the Seldarine waged war with the Dark Hordes encroaching on the north. This war waged for decades, and towards the end, we found ourselves in a losing position. The tide of war was against us. Our forces were diminishing slowly but surely after every conflict. We were isolated from the rest of the Elves south of us. With no support from our brothers and sisters, and impending doom at our doorstep, I became desperate. I concocted a plan to protect my people and buy us some time. Ancient elven magic speaks of a spell used in days of old, named the Mythal. This Mythal embodies the land with a living and protective life force, personifying all that is elven. This living force can also be given abilities of a protective nature, powers that would have kept the Dark Hordes away from the hand of the Seldarine and its surrounding lands. A chance to buy my people time and to marshal reinforcements from our southern brothers and sisters. Some say believing we had the power to bestow such magic was arrogance. Others would say using the mythal in such a way was blasphemous. I stand by my decision. I did what I had to do to save my people. We began the preparations to lay a mythal. In the weeks that came to pass, we fortified what remained of our forces within the hand. My wizards and I locked ourselves within this tower and began the arduous process of laying a mythal. Within this time, the orcs and goblins sensed our weakened state and moved in for the kill. The largest force we had ever seen besieged the hand, and the mythal was not near completion. We knew this was our last stand, and my people knew they had to buy time. For a week, we held the horde back. Entrenched in our home, my people fought, and the horde paid dearly for every room of the hand they took. For every elf that fell, the Horde paid tenfold. For all the sacrifices my people made, the last line was breached in a week's time. As the Horde began ascending the towers and the last of the defenders fell, I realized my people's sacrifice was not made in vain. We completed the last incantations for the Mythal. The spell was cast, and a shroud of pure light and energy engulfed the hand. As I watched what I thought was our salvation enter every crevice of the hand, I became horrified. Something had gone terribly wrong. The force that was supposed to bring life to the land began to twist and corrupt it. It was draining everything and everyone within the hand of its soul. I watched as every living thing within the hand of the Seldarine had its life drained to the brink of death, driving them mad. Those who died in the battle began to rise as hideous undead. 
It was at this point where I realized I wasn't the only one watching the rampant destruction of the Hand and all within. Standing before me was Labellus Enereth, the elven god of longevity and time. He was angry with me, angry as he saw the most ancient of elven magic used with carelessness, angry as he watched the lives and the land of his people being unnaturally twisted, angry that my pride and arrogance led to the breakdown of the union between the elves and the dwarves. I was transformed into a Baelnorn. My punishment was to watch over the runes of the Hand of the Seldarine and its people, cursed forever until the astrolabe was restored by putting my people to proper rest. Okay. No, not to you. To you. You have returned. There will be found this diary belonging to your daughter. My beloved daughter. I see you are thorough in your search of the hand. The last entries describe her resolve to find a way to reforge the union with those accursed dwarves. I never saw her again. You never saw her again? What became of her? Fools! Can you not discern it with your own mind? Those dwarves committed the worst atrocity knowing its impact on me. They murdered my daughter. For that I will never forgive them. For the punishment I suffered for my arrogance and pride, Labellus be damned if he thinks I will forgive them for what they did. I would stay in this cursed form, never to see Arvindor, if it meant I could make the dwarves pay for their crime. Leave now! I will not speak of this anymore! Well, he doesn't seem to be in his right mind. He is still somewhat mad. You have returned. I seek knowledge that can own that only can be divined through the heartstone. Very well. As legend states, the heartstone gem is an ancient artifact from a time long forgotten. Its most notable owners were the druids of Kaldahar before one within their circle stole the gem. It was thought forever lost until now. The Heartstone Gem contains powerful scrying abilities that can divine the affairs of people throughout the realms. There are only a few within the land who know how to release its powers. I am one of them. Well, if you're not too mad right now. With that said, what is it you seek to learn from the Heartstone Gem? We seek to learn the source of the evil that troubles the North. Then you will have what you seek. Hand me the Hearthstone Gem. Here you are. Freed from the shackles of his tormented mind, the cursed Elven Lord was at last able to assist the heroes in their quest. Handing over the Hearthstone Gem, the party stood back and watched Laro begin his divination. With the artifact raised before him, Clutched tightly in his skeletal hands, the undead sorcerer peered intently into the gem as he whispered a series of strange chants and incantations. A spark of light briefly flashed within the gem, as if a ray of sunlight had caught upon its surface. And suddenly, reflected within the mirrored facets of the stone, there appeared an image of a statue. The statue was clearly a monument of sorts, depicting an elf and a dwarf sitting side by side on a dual throne. Even if Labellus's curse had taken my eyesight, I would still recognize that hole. What you have seen is Dorne's Deep, Den of the Betrayers. In here is where the wretched dwarves hollered out their home. Be warned if your journey takes you there. If any of the dwarves remain, expect no quarter, for they will give none. Believe none of their lies, as they will all lead to treachery. If you do decide to venture forth to that dwarven vestige of evil, then I will mark its location on your map. Also, I have the power to take you there if you wish. Actually, we need to resupply before we can continue our journey. Could you take us to Kaldahar instead? And here we are in Kaldahar. So, I think the mage Understood. wanted that book about missiles, if I'm not mistaken. So, we've lost a lot of... Oh, we still have that barrel of holy water. What am I supposed to do with that one?
Oh yeah, you're faster than the rest, yes, yes, I know, because you have boots of speed, and the rest does not. I'm listening. <coughs> so we go in here. Agreed. I'll handle it. Ah, I found this book in a ruined elven tower not far from here. Perhaps you might find it useful. Useful indeed. This book is precisely what I've been searching for all these years. You have done me a great service and should be rewarded. Take this artifact as a token of my gratitude. Awesome. What do you have? No new spells, I guess. Okay, so we got a ring. A bone ring? What does it do? The elf bone ring of Kirin High plus two, verse, uh, plus two safe versus paralyzation, paralyzed poison and death magic. Immunity to finger of death and death spell. Fine. You take it then. Yeah, well, okay. So you don't have any new things. Some of the effect of blur. Yeah, why not? Buy this one for her. And we're going to sell all the stuff we have in here. And no, we can't sell that one, okay. You have my attention. Okay, it lost armor class. That's not bad. Understood. I think we still can sell a Got few it. um gems. And we can sell those books here probably too. Stop with the hand. Get in there. Done. Oh, we don't get much. Uh, for those books. Two of those actually, four of those. Oh, you still have a few. Oh, you gotta be kidding me, man. Now everything is gone. Thank you. And to the smithy. Agreed. So I guess the smith didn't get any new weapons. Agreed. Two thousand is not really much. 
No. Okay. He doesn't buy that either. Yes. Who's going to buy that? Well, okay. So I guess we will take a break now. I'm on it. And in the next video, we will probably continue to. Uh, where do we have to go? Dawn Steep. There it is. Or maybe we can do it now and then. End the video. The Heartstone's divination had at last revealed the source of the evil in the mountains. Ahead loomed the solitary peak that housed the dwarven stronghold known as Dorn's Deep. With Laurel's warnings of dwarven treachery still ringing in their ears, the heroes readied their weapons and started toward the cave entrance and whatever challenges lay beyond. And we finally entered chapter four. But if this is a new chapter, it. it probably means that the mage has new spells, is that right? All right. I will check him out, so hold on for a second. Okay, let's I'm see whether the mage got any new spells. Um, I think Ice Storm and Monsters are Shadow Monsters, that's new. Old monsters, shroud of flames, damning shadow monsters, emotion fear, spirit armor, fire charm, slow, old person, decker staff. I think the rest I already have. Shadow monsters, old monster, shroud of flame, damning shadow monster, emotion fear, spirit armor. Okay, so I only needed the first four. Okay. Ready. Done. One, two, three, four. Thank you. Uh, yeah, and since the Paladin now is on the ninth level, he finally has his first level. Uh, you know, first level one spell. Awesome, a cure light wound. Cure light wound. Cure light wounds spell. Awesome. Did I get any new sp nice spells for the mage? Monster summoning two and shadow monsters. Still no level 6 spells. I could use a few level 6 spells since I'm probably going to Here. reach that level soon. But, so as I guess I think I will take a break now and we will see each other in the next video when we will enter uh, the place where the dwarves live. I forgot it. So, well, thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye. Uh, wait, actually, there was something I Ready. did forget. Understood. Because the mage does not only get new Got spells. It. He also gets new items. Oh well, wait. So, we have this nice rope here. Ogi Lux Great Rope. This rope was fashioned uh, from strong fabric and dyed dark blue, the favorite color of its proud owner, the Archmage, o Archmage Ogi Lux. A Sambian by birth, Ogilak was a powerful man as strong in body as he was in mind. However, Ogilak wasn't content to merely be strong, he wanted to be exceptionally strong. When he put on these robes, proud men stood aside and braggarts st stilled their tongues. For all of Ogilak's pride and prowess, he was unable to defeat the red wizard Abjurer Nesk Veltim. Nesk took the robe as a prize. They were later stolen... Uh, and sold by a daring rogue. Armor class 4 uh, grants a strength of 1899 and a plus 2 to constitution. That's not half bad. It's expensive as hell, but I can afford it. And see, now I 
Seldana has an armor class of minus one and now she has one of minus three. So, I think that's not half bad. So we, s we can't sell the necromancer's rope in here. Oh, dang it. But luckily the smith would buy the necromancer's rope. He pays like 3000 gold pieces less than the mage would. But yeah, here we can sell it. So, well, thank you very much for watching and now we will truly see each other in the next video. So, see you soon.